In tonight's health alert, we resurrect a debate about a chemical that we ingest every day. It's in our water, it's in a lot of our food, and it's in a number of cavity-fighting products. Tonight, we ask tough questions about this chemical, one that many pu public health officials would rather not talk about. It's in the tap water we drink and many of the foods we eat. And for decades, we've been told it helps fight cavities. But there are critics who say this chemical is doing more harm than good. I've worked for a lot of dangerous things in my career. This one scares me. Arsenic? Lead? Nope. It's fluoride, the kind you brush your teeth with, and the kind that's been added to our city water supply since 1969. Every public water district in Georgia is required by law to do so. When we started the fluoridate 50 plus years ago, water was the only source for the fluoride. Health advocate Daniel Stocken works for the Lilly Center, a public health training firm that's working to end fluoridation. He spent the last five years spreading the word about fluoride and its potential negative health effects, one of which is dental fluorosis. It's caused by ingesting too much fluoride from various sources as your teeth are being formed. In mild cases, fluorosis appears as white or brown stains on your teeth. If it's more severe, it can include indentions or pitting of the teeth. The damage is irreversible. A lot of folks think it's, oh, I just have bad hygiene, or I've got cavities, and they have no idea that this, these stains and these pits are actually caused by the fluorides that they've ingested. Atlanta chiropractor Hamilton Wetzel is one of many Americans diagnosed with a mild case of dental fluorosis. There are some white, distinct white marks across there and a couple brown spots as well. Stocken invited Wetzel to participate in the Lilly Center's latest project. It's a campaign to educate the community on the potential side effects of ingesting fluoride. Were you told that it could be harmful or that Stocken it could claims the effects of fluoride reach far beyond our teeth. He says our bodies retain about half of the fluoride we ingest and that it does accumulate over time. If fluorides do this to teeth, which are the hardest surfaces in your body, what do we think that they're doing to our soft tissues? The American Dental Association and the Centers for Disease Control have endorsed water fluoridation since 1950. And while they admit fluoride can be toxic in excessive quantities, the ADA maintains at optimal levels, water fluoridation is a safe and effective way to prevent dental decay. But when we tried to ask the tough questions, the CDC and the state dental director denied our requests for interviews. We were instead referred to the CDC's website and the American Dental Association's Fluoride Facts, an article which was last reviewed in 2005. It's bad science. It's outdated science. More and more communities are beginning to jump on the anti-fluoridation bandwagon, such as Corning, New York, Bellingham, Washington, and Juneau, Alaska. Meanwhile, Atlantans continue to drink fluoridated water as mandated by the state, and many have tough questions for the people who made that choice for them. Why are they doing it after there's been a lot, of, a lot more research coming out that shows that it's not necessary? Stockin says there's a lot of new information that hasn't been widely publicized, including the fact the CDC is now encouraging parents to use low fluoride or non-fluoridated water to mix with the baby formula. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, babies don't need fluoride during the first six months because they don't have teeth. 